Welcome to Good News for a Change, a video and audio podcast on the gospel with Father Constantine Lazarakis of the Dormition of the Virgin Mary Greek Orthodox Church of the Hamptons in Southampton, New York. In this episode, Love is Patient and Kind. Two Sundays in a row I am compelled to draw your attention not to the gospel reading, but instead to the epistle reading that appears in our lectionary. Of course, this morning we read the epistle reading not following the weekly cycle of epistle readings, but following today's feast day. On the first day of November, we commemorate Cosmas and Damien. Cosmas and Damien were unmercenaries. What is an unmercenary? Does anybody know what that even means? It's a silly term, right? Unmercenary. I'll give you a much easier term so you know what Cosmos and Damien were. They were volunteers, right? A mercenary is someone who goes out and fights for pay. An unmercenary is someone who goes out and doesn't get pay, right? But Cosmos and Damien were not mercenary soldiers or unmercenary soldiers. They were volunteer medics. They were doctors. They had insight into how to cure human ailments that not many people had in their day. They had this education, they had this ability, they had this set of skills, and guess what? They came to know Christ. And when they came to know Christ, they decided that they could no longer charge for their services. They said, God has compelled me to use this gift as the glory of his name. So they would go around preaching Jesus, making the sick well through medical means, and they did it all in the name of Christ. You can imagine the conversation, well, Doc, what do I owe you? Just glorify the name of God, right? It's extraordinary how so many people throughout history, whether they be doctors or whether they be kings or whether they be housewives or whether they be children, whether they be illiterately illiterate or wonderfully educated, it's extraordinary how many people throughout the history of Christianity have come to realize God gave me everything, now I have to give everything to God. And they suddenly began to understand their lives as stewardship. They began to understand their lives as a specific amount of time and gifts that God had put them in charge of. And they started to evaluate not what's the best thing that I can do with this stuff I've got for myself, not even what's the best thing I can do with this stuff I've got for my family or for my friends or for my town. What is the best thing I can do with this stuff I've got for God? It's His. He put me in charge of it. I have to use it for His purposes, whether it's a lot or a little. And when we begin to understand ourselves as stewards of God's creation, when we begin to understand that our very lives are not our own, but are on loan from God, that everything we are and everything we have comes from Him, and that He's entrusted it to us and He expects us to do something with it, can be a heavy burden. We can say to ourselves, wow, I have a lot of responsibility here. How do I figure this out? Well, the good thing is that God gives us a guidepost. And if we're following the guidepost, it's very unlikely that we'll go wrong. It's hard to follow the guidepost. But here it is. 
This is what St. Paul tells us about love. And I want you to hear the first part of what he says really, really well. Okay? If I can even find it, because I'm shuffling through my pages here. Here it is. Okay? He says... If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but I do not have love, then I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. What did he say? He said, I can say the most eloquent things. I can have the most intense education. I can make the most persuasive argument. But if I don't have loy, if I don't have love, it's a cacophony. It's noise. He goes on and says, I can have prophetic powers. I can understand all mysteries and all knowledge. I can have faith so as to move mountains. Basically what Paul is saying here is he says, I can be wildly powerful. I can be so powerful that I tell a mountain to move and it gets up and moves. Right? But if I don't have love, I have nothing. I can be the most educated. I can be the wealthiest. I can be the most intelligent. I can be the most persuasive. I can be the most powerful. But if I don't have love according to the Bible, I have nothing. That's my number one priority. This is even great. He says, I can give away everything I have. I can be the most generous. I can deliver my body to be burned. I can even give up my own body. I can even become a martyr. But if I don't have love, I have gained nothing. So, St. Paul tells us today that if we have one guidepost in the Christian life, that guidepost is love. We want to be like Cosmas and Damien. We want to start to view ourselves in terms of stewards over what God has given us. We want to start giving back to Him. We don't know where to start. <clears throat> this is the place to start with Corinthians 13. Start by learning how to love. Start by realizing that love is the primary object of Christian life. And what is love? Look how cool St. Paul is. Not only does he tell us it's the most important thing, but he gives us a nearly perfect definition of that most important thing. And you've heard it so many times, but I want you to listen to it again. He says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable and it's not resentful. It does not rejoice in what is wrong, but rejoices in what is right. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. Now, I had a Sunday school teacher. I know I tell you about my Sunday school teachers. I talked about Mary Zervos a few weeks ago. Now I'm going to tell you about a guy named Dean Athens. Awesome Sunday school teacher. And he gave us a little test, and this is how I'm going to close. I shared it with the Goyans while we were in Boston a couple of weeks ago. This is how I'm going to close this morning's service. He said, give yourself the Christianity test. See how good a disciple of Jesus are you. He says, you're going to take that description of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Right? And you're going to take the word love out everywhere it occurs. And everywhere it occurs, you're going to put a blank there. And then you're going to get out your pencil, and you're going to write your own name in that blank. And then you're going to read it to yourself. And you're going to ask myself, does it sound true? So if I take it out... And I say to myself, um, Father Constantine is patient and kind. Father Constantine is not jealous 
<coughs> or boastful. Father Constantine is not arrogant or rude. Father Constantine, Constantine does not insist on his own way. And I go through those things and I ask myself, is it a true description? Which it's not. Because <laughs> I'm none of those things, right? Then I can say to myself, good job, buddy. You're being a good Christian. But if I read those words and they ring hollow, <coughs> and I say, well, I am kind of arrogant. I am a little bit rude. I'm actually quite stubborn, and I do insist on my own way, even when I know my own way is wrong. Then I have a way of identifying those things in my spiritual life that I need to work on. So as we start out November 1st, we say Kalomina, good month to everybody. Let us set Cosmas and Damien, who devoted all of their resources to the Lord as our examples, and let us follow them using the guidepost of love. Let us strive to be patient, kind, enduring, and all of those wonderful things that St. Paul talks about in the 13th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthians. Thank you for being here. May God bless each and every one. You've been listening to Good News for a Change, a video and audio podcast on the Sunday Gospel with Father Constantine Lazarakis. To hear more, visit the Orthodox Christian Network at myocn.net. That's myocn.net.